and get started. I think we'll have more people trickle in, but that way maybe we can give a little bit more time back during what I'm sure is a busy week. Um, thank you to everyone who is here now who uh, worked with our schedule. We um, had a little bit of a issue that Laura's internet wasn't working, but Laura couldn't be at the Durham Clinic for other extenuating circumstances. So we just weren't able to pivot as quickly as we usually are. So thank you for uh, Laura and everyone here now um, for rescheduling. If you are not watching this live, thank you for taking the time to go back through and enjoy it with us. There's a lot to learn about reading services and I'm very excited. I um, also just wanna wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving week. I hope um, this is like one of the last things that you'll do maybe before you break for the holidays and um, enjoy a Thanksgiving with friends and family and hopefully food and fun and parades and all kinds of things. Um, so as we have discussed with all of our webinars, um, this being the last one of seven, we have had a great lineup of sponsors um, that are um, local folks, local businesses working here uh, in the community, supporting families, just like we aim to at Emerge. Goldfish Swim School, if you're not familiar, just at least Google it so you can see what it looks like. It is an indoor um, swim lesson facility that is open all year and um, it's heated inside and it's really tropical and fun um, and it makes you feel like you have escaped to the beach for the weekend to learn how to swim. Um, but they're doing really great things, building kids confidence in and out of the pool um, and working to lower some of those numbers of kids who don't know how to swim and um, kids who aren't able to enjoy things in the summer um, because they aren't safe in the pool. So doing really important, great work. Um, Home and Family Dental. We love Shana Holman. She's the owner and like, the lead dentist there. Um, lives, works, uh, participates in this community. Could not have been quicker to say yes when I asked her. They do a lot of um, work with clients of ours and and we see a lot of clients of theirs a lot of the work that we do overlaps so we're real grateful for their partnership robbie norris farm bureau robbie norris is a farm bureau insurance agent in this community he has been for a very very long time and he's just a really great guy super reliable super knowledgeable um, super community driven shows up supports however he can um, and that's exactly what he did here to make this possible and um, make these free for everyone and then finally, Chapel Hill Media Group, they run 97.9 The Hill um, on FM radio and chapelboro.com, um, which is a daily local newspaper, or daily local digital newspaper. Um, so hyper-local, Chapel Hill, Carborough, Pittsburgh, Hillsborough, Durham. Um, and when I told them about this idea that we wanted to talk about some of these cool programs that we have at Emerge and that I needed to, so, some support getting the word out um, and making sure as many families as possible knew that these were happening, could not have been better about quite literally broadcasting the information out for us. So grateful for them, grateful for all of our sponsors and grateful for uh, Laura, who's going to take it away. Thanks, Allie. Um, so my name is Laura. I am a speech therapist at our Durham location, and I have been here since um, 2018. I really love working with the clients and students and working to help develop our programs here at Emerge. Um, I have several areas of clinical interest, including literacy, which is what we'll be talking about today, as well as apraxia of speech and autism. Um, in my free time, I love eating good food, hanging out with my cats, reading a good book, and traveling. Um, so I'll skip over this because everyone has probably seen this as part of our um, as part of this webinar series. But at Emerge, we provide pediatric occupational speech and physical therapy services, in addition to a lot of the amazing programs that you've learned about um, here as part of this webinar series. Um, one of the newer programs that we've been offering for about the past two or three years is reading services. And so when I'm talking about reading services today, the main thing I'm, I'm going to go over are the science of reading, why you might want to choose to work with a speech language pathologist, a speech therapist, when you are um, choosing someone to work on reading with your child, um, what makes Emerge different from other places where you might get reading services, um, some testimonials, and then how to get started. Um, so the first thing I'll go over is the science of reading, and this is something that came out a couple years back um, that really helped to guide everyone, whether those be teachers, um, 
therapists, other interventionists on how to provide the most evidence-based support to help our children with reading. And I think that this has always been really important, but especially um, now that we are post-COVID, I think that a lot of families are seeing that um, with that switch to virtual learning, that there have some, been some delays with their children when it comes to reading. And so this has been more important to talk about than ever before. <clears throat> so um, one main thing I wanted to highlight um, when we're thinking about the science of reading is Scarborough's Reading Rope. And so this was created by a researcher that really helps to highlight all of the complex factors that come into play when you're learning how to read. Um, reading is one of the most complex things that we can do because it requires so much knowledge of language and word recognition. And all of those things really get tied and braided together to create a skilled reader. And so this visual really helps to highlight how complex the process is and how important it is to work with someone who has a strong background in reading and literacy because there are so many places where your child could you know fall off the wagon where they could be struggling and so it's really important that we be able to tease out those um, areas that are a little more challenging in order to provide some support there use their strengths um, to help make them a more confident reader <clears throat> so this visual breaks down a little bit more about the science of reading. Um, so when we're thinking about the science of reading, we are thinking about a collection of research um, over the years <clears throat> that all contain information on what it is to be a successful reader. We're thinking about the big five ideas behind reading, which is phonemic awareness, so that ability to hear sounds in our brain and manipulate them, phonics, which is understanding how letters fit in with those sounds, um, fluency, which is that ability to read quickly and accurately, vocabulary, so understanding what words mean and how we can use them, and then comprehension, so that ability to put it all together to figure, to make meaning out of what we read. Um, it's important when we're thinking about the science of reading that we remember that the science of reading is ever evolving. Um, there, you know, there's always going to be new research that is coming out. And so it's really important that we stay on top of this latest research and we change our practice accordingly to best support the children that we work with. Um, the science of reading is not a single program or a single intervention that you can buy that will fix all of the problems magically. Um, it's not a phonic-based program that just focuses on phonic skills, so understanding letters and sounds. There's so much more to reading than that. Um, and it's important to know that there is, you know, this is always changing. There's not one research study that tells us this is how you teach reading. And so it's really important that we take in new information all the time. So this kind of leads into the next thing I want to talk about, which is why work with a speech therapist on reading. Um, so when we think about that Scarborough's reading rope, that giant box is something that speech therapists went to school for six years to get our bachelor's and master's degrees specifically focusing on these areas. And so these are some really big areas that we have lots of background knowledge in, and we are able to use that background knowledge in order to help make more confident readers. Um, also, when we're thinking about the science of reading and how research-based it is, it's really important to think about how speech therapists consume research. Um, we are all avid consumers of research. Um, everything that we do as SLPs is backed by research, and we aren't afraid to change our mind or change our methods based on the latest research. Um, speech therapists are required to take at least 10 hours of continuing education every year in order to maintain our licenses. And so we are consuming this research not only to better ourselves and our practices, but also because it's a requirement. And so we really love taking the research and trying to adjust what we're doing based on the best evidence that is out there at the time. Um, SLPs also have um, lots of training in working with children with a wide variety of disabilities um, and working to customize interventions to fit individual needs. Um, studies have shown that roughly 60% of children with dyslexia have at least one other diagnosis. Um, this could include ADHD, specific learning disabilities, language disorders, anxiety, autism, conduct disorders. And so because a speech therapist is all about working with children with differences and disorders. That is why, you know, working on reading therapy is specifically effective with us because, again, we have so much training and so much background on trying to customize 
um, interventions and figure out what those areas of need are. Um, while in school, reading intervention is often conducted in small pullout groups, um, which is really vital and really important, but just because a child is getting some support in school doesn't mean they might not benefit from additional support. Um, this in-school support is great, but your child might also benefit from some individualized support that's customized to their unique interests, strengths, and needs. And so in individual therapy, the therapist you're working with can spend more time on concepts that are hard for your child and kind of trial unique ways to support their comprehension and retention and kind of work with your child to figure out how they learn and how to best support them as an individual versus them in a small group. So next, I'll talk a little bit more about the eMERGE difference and what reading therapy looks like here. Um, there are lots of therapists out there, and everyone has their own unique specialties and strengths. Um, but I will say a lot of the time, kids and families come to me, and they say that reading therapy, reading services look like sitting at a table doing worksheets. And that is something that um, is not really something we do much at eMERGE. Um, so we are a very highly collaborative team and we are always talking and consulting with each other. Um, in preparation for this presentation, I actually reached out to all the speech therapists across all three of our locations and was able to do an audit of all of the different training programs that our speech therapists have. And so it's a pretty comprehensive list, as you can see, which I think is pretty cool and pretty unique because we are always communicating um, with each other and trying to take bits and pieces of different programs to figure out how to best support the children we work with. And so when we have a team that is so um, broadly trained, it really helps us to figure out um, the best way to work with your child. <clears throat> We're also all about play and movement-based therapy. Um, so in this slide, I've taken a couple pictures from the reading therapy and sessions that I've done with the children at Emerge. And so you can see that there's a lot of creative ways that we work movement and play into our reading sessions together, whether this be obstacle courses, taking times to climb on the rock wall, play games with each other, because really, um, learning is going to be so much more impactful and motivating when you are using movement, when you are using play in order to learn. We're also all about providing sensory supports and multi-sensory learning. So again, you can see some pictures taken from my um, readings, a couple of my reading sessions where you can see all of the unique ways we're using multi-sensory learning, whether that be alternative seating um, on a rocking um, seat or on a hoppity ball or even on a swing and then ways that we're working that in um, with multi-sensory learning such as using play-doh or um, you can see this child is practicing tracing letters using a little um, bag full of squishy slime and so finding really fun mold motivating multi-sensory ways to support learning is another thing that's kind of the bread and butter um, of eMERGE. Um, so when you're thinking about reading therapy at Emerge, um, you're going to think about how we are always going to embrace your child's individual differences, um, their special interests, and incorporate movement-based and multi-sensory learning. Um, and we will always provide explicit sequential instruction because that is one thing that the science of reading has taught us is that providing that really specific um, instruction that goes in a very... Um, in an order that matches what they need to be learning and works on having concepts build up um, is really important. Um, so since reading therapy is customized to your child's needs, it's really hard to say exactly what a reading therapy session might look like because it's going to be a little different for every child. Um, so with my more classic reading therapy sessions, this is kind of the structure I follow, where we start off with an auditory and visual drill of known concepts. Then we move into application of known concepts within single words and sentences, working on both reading and spelling. Then we may move on to learning a new rule-based concept and practice applying this new concept. We may also spend time talking about rule breakers, all of those words in English that don't really follow the pattern that we come to expect um, and different memorization strategies for um, keeping in mind those rule breakers. And then I'm always going to include some home, home programming um, so that children are able to take what they've learned in their reading sessions with me and practice it at home. 
Um, so because breeding therapy might look so different depending on what your child's needs are, I've also included a couple of examples um, that kind of highlight the scope of what reading therapy might look like. Um, so here's one example. The example might be that your child, Emma, is having trouble recognizing letters and sounds and isn't really able to blend sounds together to make a word. Um, so reading therapy might look like using sound association and recognition to help with that auditory discrimination piece. And so maybe we'll read sound loaded books like Silly Sally. And every time your child hears the S sound, they have to raise their hand or they have to jump um, into a crash pad. Again, we're always trying to work that movement in. Um, and so that's really helpful. We might provide um, really explicit instruction on letter formation. So you can see the handwriting house that I love to use with my um, with the kids that I work with that really talk about um, ways that we can work on forming letters. How do we know if they stay on the main floor versus go into the ceiling or down into the basement? Um, and then we'll all, we might also do some blending activities. So you can see that there are some creative ways that we can put together sounds and blend them together um, to work on creating words, even if that's outside of letters, just maybe playing some I spy games like I see a d, a, g. Okay, can you figure out that those words are blended together to say dog? And so there are lots of creative ways to work on those skills within those sessions. Another example of a child who might come to seek reading services um, is one here. So Matt can read out loud, but he has trouble remembering what he's read and answering questions about it. So we might provide instruction on visualization. Um, a lot of kids who have trouble with comprehension um, aren't really able to create those images in their brain and use that information to then answer questions. And so teaching really explicit methods on how to support that visualization can be really beneficial. We might work on activating background knowledge, using the things that they already know to help support their comprehension before they even start reading the story. We might teach them executive functioning strategies like going back and highlighting to help with their comprehension. Or maybe we'll just talk about story grammar. Um, that's the little rope you see in the middle where sometimes teaching a child what to expect from a story in terms of every story is going to have characters and a setting. They might all have um, that critical thinking triangle where feelings and actions come together to form a plan that informs the rest of the story. So sometimes teaching something like that can really um, help a lot with comprehension um, as you are reading. Um, here's another example. So Sam can read short words, but he has trouble reading longer ones. So therapy sessions for Sam might look like teaching about syllable segmentation. Um, so how do we know where to divide up syllables and what are the steps we can follow to divide those up? It might um, focus on teaching morphemes. So understanding that a lot of words have prefixes and suffixes and roots and bases. And if we know what those are, we can more easily divide up words in order to figure out how to read longer, more complex words. Another example might be with Alice. So Alice can read, but she has a lot of trouble with spelling. So we would teach about spelling rules. And there are lots of different um, strategies that utilize um, you know, mnemonics and other memory um, tools to help support understanding of spelling. And so we might work on those together in therapy. <clears throat> One last example. Um, Grant has so many great ideas, but he can't put them on paper. It's hard to read um, what he wants to say, and his paragraphs are also often missing really big pieces of information. So for a child like this, we might work on editing and self-monitoring skills to make sure that when he does put together a written piece, that we're able to understand what he's saying by making sure we're capitalizing appropriately, using the correct punctuation. Um, we might work on using graphic organizers to help organize our thoughts before we start writing and using other executive functioning strategies to support him in working to figure out how to convey all of his great ideas. Um, so the last thing I wanted to wrap up with are some testimonials that I collected from a couple of amazing clients that I currently work with on reading that really highlight um, why reading intervention is so important and kind of the eMERGE um, difference there. Um, so you can see that a lot of these testimonials highlight um, growths and confidence um, helping children to understand their strengths and utilize and harness those strengths to support areas of need, um, working on unlocking those seat 
secrets and hidden clues to being a successful reader, working to make it fun, working to make it logical, incorporating movements and games and special interests to um, help kind of gain the interest of kids. Because the second you have that interest, then you see that motivation increase, and then they're a lot more successful moving forward. Um, so here are a couple of testimonials from some current clients um, who are receiving reading services. Um, here you can scan a QR code to submit an initial inquiry form on our website. Um, you would select reading therapy from the drop down box and then get connected with me to discuss some options. Um, this was the last um, webinar in our webinar schedule, um, but uh, Ali has done a great job recording all the webinars and is working to put them all together in a central location so that you can access all of these um, moving forward. So I will go ahead and pass this off to Ali now. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Um, love learning from all of you guys. Love learning about reading services and just like how it all works so differently than what we may have seen for typical like reading support or or feeding support like we've talked about or things like that so thank you for taking the time and i know you don't feel well today so i appreciate it twice as much um like laura said here uh oh sorry that was the schedule of um our our webinars that we started back in october and um we are in the process of turning them all into youtube videos so that it's very easy to access and using them as resources um for folks who are interested they can actually access these webinars and learn about it from the experts themselves. So this has been a great opportunity, not just to connect with people, um, but to kind of build this, this content out so that, um, that we have it when we, when we need to refer to the folks who put these programs together. So um, this has been the last one. Normally I would say go check them all out and register, but thanks to everyone who um, has joined us and um, is watching these again. Um, Laura's contact information is here. If you are interested in reading services, Laura is who you will be connected with um, if you fill out our initial inquiry form on our website. And then um, Brittany, our uh, executive director and practice owner has been um, very helpful in these webinars too. She taught the Taskmasters one um, several weeks ago. So it's just been a great learning opportunity and a great way to connect. And um, I appreciate everybody. Um, the winner of lunch uh, uh, is, I just put it on the list, sorry, Muhammad, if you are in here, you are getting free lunch. Thank you so much. Um, and if you're not watching it live, um, I hope you learned a lot from Laura this week and last week and all the weeks before. And um, yeah, it's just been a wonderful time for learning. Um, and now it's Thanksgiving. So it's worked out really well. Thanks so much, Laura. Thanks, everybody. Um, if you have questions, reach out to Laura. She's great about getting back quickly. Um, that's it. That's all we got. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks.